So this morning I want to talk about how to receive. And that may seem odd because you may think to yourself, what do you mean? I mean, why would you have to learn how to receive? Well, number one, um, if we don't learn how to receive, we have nothing to give because we are not creators. There is only one creator. And so if we don't learn to receive from the Lord, then we have nothing to give. Also, I find that when it comes to receiving, even though, again, we don't think about it, we oftentimes fall into one of two ditches. On the one side, we just take and take and take, and we don't think about how we are to give what we are receiving. Scripture talks about it's better to to give than receive, and it certainly is. However, once again, you have nothing to give unless you first receive. Now on the other side, and this is a place where I think that many of us fall, and it's a subtle temptation of the enemy that we don't get. We, we think it's holy, but it's actually rooted in pride. Many times we refuse to receive because our pride says no, I haven't earned that yet. And it sounds holy. Oh, no, 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 I I need to work for that. You know, and and when we, uh, in our culture and so on, that that sounds like a good thing, you know, because maybe you've been around some people who will just take, take, and take, and they're not giving, and and you run into someone who says, no, 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 I need to earn that. Well, the only problem is, You cannot earn the things that Jesus wants to give. You cannot earn it. You can only receive it. And so if you come to the Lord with this idea that, God, I really want to work for this, what you are doing is, in your pride, you are saying, I'm able to earn it, and you can not. It's so crucial that we can't do that. Before we go to the main scripture in Galatians 3, I want to share something with you out of Romans uh, chapter 4, verse 12, or I'm sorry, chapter 4, verse 2, verses 2 and 3. I want you to listen to what Paul writes about good deeds. He's talking about Abraham, and in the scripture we're going to go to in Galatians, we're going to be looking at Abraham. He was considered the father of the faith. It says this about Abraham, verse 2. If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, if he would have had something to boast about. See, and what we don't get is the subtle temptation of the enemy. That's where he wants to take us. He wants you to be focused on your good deeds and earning something, and it feels holy and it feels right, but where it leads is boasting. Because if you think that you earned something from God, there's going to be this pride that swells up and look at me. And you're going to be looking at everybody else around you like they're a bunch of peasants because, you know, they haven't accomplished what you've accomplished. Well, guess what? None of us are in that situation. It goes on and it says, but that was not God's way. That was not God's way. For the scriptures tell us, Abraham believed God and God counted him righteous because of his faith. You cannot produce righteousness. Only God can make you righteous. How does that happen, though? You've got to receive it. How do you receive it? Well, it says he believed. But this is another place that some of us get caught up. Because we think believing is just simply believing the story about Jesus. Well, no, James declares the demons believe the story about Jesus. It does them no good. Why? Because the belief we're talking about is trusting. If I believe in you, okay, if you come to me with an investment and you say, Kirk, I want you to give me $10,000 to put in this, and I say, I believe in you, but I'm not about to give you a dime. 
Who cares? But you know what? That's what so many do with Jesus, and that's why they don't receive. No, no, no. Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you everything, but I need you to invest. Is that earning? Is that producing? No, no, no. It's surrendering. Okay, God, here I am. Here's my life. Here are the decisions in my life. I don't get to make them anymore. You get to make them because I believe in you, which is to say, I trust you. But the scripture we're going to go to in Galatians really talks about where many of us get hung up even after coming to the Lord. Because even after initially surrendering to the Lord, the the enemy doesn't give up on us. He keeps coming back and he keeps saying, okay, yeah, yeah, you surrendered to the Lord, but the Lord is expecting some things out of you and you had better get your act together because let's face it, you're a mess. And if you don't get your act together, God's about ready to boot you to the side. And so suddenly the enemy starts dropping these things that we need to get together. And what we're going to find in Galatians is going to talk about the law. Now, I want to share with you that each of us has our own script of laws in our mind. Things, uh, because laws are standards, okay? We all have these standards um, that, that we believe are important. And many times what we do is when we look at our relationship with God, we feel like, okay, if I'm meeting this standard, then I'm worthy of God's love. If I'm not meeting this standard, I'm not worthy of God's love. And Satan keys in on those things and he comes after it. And so what we find ourselves doing is saying, I'm not worthy of God's love. And we start backing away and we go into that place we talked about last week of shame. And we start isolating ourselves from God and we stop receiving. God has so much He wants to give you, but you must be willing to receive. You can't let your pride rise up and say, no, I've been there before. Somebody wants to bless me with something, and there's something inside of me that says, no, I can't just receive that. i got to work for that because, you know, I'm a prideful person. And what happens there is I cut off blessing for me, and guess what? I cut off blessing for that person because God is moving in that person to try and bless me with something. And what God wants to do is He wants me to receive it because it takes humility. It takes putting my pride aside. And when that happens and I get into that humble place, you know what I'm going to be looking to do? I'm going to be looking to give to others. But when I think that I'm earning things, you know what I turn into? I turn into the grump that doesn't want to give anything to anybody. Because you didn't earn that. I worked for this. Right? We don't want to give anything. Well, that's not who Jesus was. If you read through the Gospels, you find Jesus was a giver. But you know what? You'll also find he was a receiver. Now, he didn't need to receive anything. He was God. He had everything. But you know what? He purposely on this earth walked in a place where he didn't own a bunch of stuff. (laughs) He was looking to others to give. Why would he do that? Because he was teaching us how to walk with God. And he was also teaching those people. Because that's what God does with us. He gives us opportunities to give because it grows us. All right, the scripture I want to go to, where I want to focus our time, is Galatians chapter 3. Um, Don't worry, I'm not going to read this word for word, the entirety of it. But we are going to go through um, a a major section of this. So Galatians chapter 3. This is a letter that Paul has written to people who've placed their faith in Christ. They placed their faith in Christ, but they're at a dangerous place because the enemy is starting to deceive them. And I I mean, I'll be honest with you, you know, part of the reason that that I'm going to these places is because of, of what I shared with you several weeks ago about the fellow pastor who got it messed up here and in here. And how did that happen? Well, part of the way is about what we're going to read in Galatians chapter 3. He stopped being willing to receive. He thought he had to earn things. And when he failed at it, it crushed him and he just couldn't take it anymore. 
This is not an isolated incident. This is where God wants, or I'm sorry, this is where the enemy wants to take every one of us. Verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. Now, now this is interesting because we can be at that place where we're receiving from the Lord. We see him clearly. We lay our lives down before him. But we have to continue in that spot. And so he's sharing with them. They were in that spot. But something took place. Verse 2, let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Rhetorical question, of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. Now that's important. That, that is a foundational part of the Gospel. You do not receive the Holy Spirit by somehow earning it. I don't care what you've done. God's Jesus' blood can cover that, but you must receive it. You, you must, first of all, confess it, okay? If you're trying to hide it, and you're trying to say, I don't care what God says, this is okay, well, you're not accepting Him as Lord, okay? But if you will be open and honest with Him, there is nothing His blood can't cover, but you've got to get to that that. Hum, that, that humility place that place where you just lay down your pride and you say I, I don't know how it happened but it did and, and this is where I'm at and, and you are able to receive at that point so he's bringing that back to them then in verse 3 he says how foolish can you be after starting your new lives in the spirit why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort have you experienced so much for nothing? Surely it was not in vain, was it? If you've been walking with the Lord any amount of time, you have probably struggled with this very thing. Because it's where the enemy takes us. You get in your mind a certain standard, a certain expectation where you want your life to be. Uh, and, and it's good that we look to the Lord with expectation, knowing that the Lord is absolutely able to transform us. There is nothing that He cannot break you free from. There's nothing. However, when we walk this path out, many times God will continue to allow us to struggle with certain things. Is He making a sin? Absolutely not. That's completely on us. But... As he allows it, part of the reason he's allowing it is because we actually haven't reached the place of humility that he wants to bring us to. We still have these areas of pride where we're looking around at other people like, you know, you're pretty good, but I'm actually a little better. You know, we're not going to say those things out loud, right? But, but inside, we, we kind of think that. Well, guess what? God sees it clearly. He sees it in my own heart. And He's exposed that over and over to me. And, and, and I really just wasn't seeing it. I, I just, I wasn't. But the more I walk with the Lord, He continues to show me the pride that is actually in here and how it blocks me from receiving blessings from Him because His blessings are given to me that I would give to others. But what I find is I receive blessings and where my flesh goes, I want you to go, I, I, want, I want to say to you, look at these blessings. And I want you to go, oh wow, that's impressive. How do I do that? That's where my pride goes. I, I mean, it's, it's so strong, it's sickening. I don't think I'm alone in this. I think it's part of the human condition. And so, even though the Lord doesn't cause me to sin, I think that as long as I hold on to the pride, I block the healing that He wants to give me, and I continue to struggle. And so He's looking for me to reach that point where I give more and more of that pride away 
so that I'm just, I'm truly giving all glory to God. That's where the Lord wants to take us. But again, I want you to hear this. In the midst of that struggle that God's going on, where he's allowing your pride to be stripped away, the enemy's coming in and saying, you're a failure. You're a failure. I cannot believe you're still struggling with this. I mean, if you really loved God, if you were serious when you said, I surrender to you, God, this would not be an issue. I want you to hear this. That's a lie. That's a lie, okay? We get into that place, and the enemy wants, to, wants us to get into that place so that we either just walk away, or we go into this place where we just ignore our sin, or we go into this place where we start justifying and we start saying, no, no, that's the way God made me. You know, God wants me to you know, act out in, in whatever way it is, whatever way I'm struggling with. But God wants to give us something so much more, but we've got to be willing to receive it. Let's read on. Verse 5, I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? No. He says, of course not. But again, I, 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 we got to go here. How many times have you done this? How many times have you said, oh, that bad thing that just happened to me, I know why it did. It's because I did this over here and God's punishing me. I got to tell you, I've done that. I've got to tell you, I have heard that out of so many people. We, we go there. This declares no to that. That is not the way God works. Now, does God discipline his children? Scripture declares yes. He loves you. He's going to discipline you. But discipline is always about trying to turn you. It's never about, oh, you messed up there. You're getting it now. That is never God's heart. Now, you might run into that from people around you. That is never God's heart. God's discipline always has a purpose. It's not because, oh, you messed up. Here it comes. Hammer time. No, that's not God's heart. And so it's so important that when you find yourself in that situation, you stop and you go, whoa, wait a minute. That's a lie. The, the enemy's speaking to me right now. He's trying to get me to walk down. Because if I will buy that, if I will buy that God is punishing me because of my behavior, here's what's going to happen. As you continue to live your life, you're going to continue to mess up Bad things are going to continue to happen, and eventually you're going to get to the point where you say, you know what, I don't even think I'm a child of God. That's where the enemy wants to take you. It says here that God was working miracles among them. Why? Because they earned it? No! Because they trusted in Him. Because they believed in Him. God wants to work things in our lives. He's looking for people who will surrender. He's looking for people who will simply believe. Verse 6, in the same way, Abraham believed God. This is going back to that Romans um, passage we read. And God counted him as righteous because of his faith. The real children of Abraham then are those who put their faith in God. Now I want to touch base. What are we talking about here? We go back to Abraham and, and one of the big things that we see Abraham doing is God asked him to sacrifice his son. Now it wasn't action that justified Abraham. It was believing, but his actions followed his belief. He trusted in God that if he were to kill his son, that God would either bring him back to life or, or so, he would do something. And so he was willing to do what God asked him. So again, when we talk about belief, we're not talking about, oh, I believe that happened. God is saying, do you believe enough to trust me? So if you believe enough to trust God, guess what? 
you're going to take some action. So if God wants to set you free from something, and God says, okay, I'm going to set you free from something, but I want you to go do this. Well, I, no, that's, that's silly. I, I mean, Steph was talking this morning about circling the wall. Okay, that's dumb. It, walls don't come down because you circle them. Well, God's asking it. Are you willing to do it? You know, uh, uh, the, the, the guy who was going to be healed that, you know, needed to go down the water and, you know, dip himself in it. And he's like, that, that's so dumb. That's not even good water they want me to go into. You know what? God asks things like that. Why does he do it? To test you? Because it's about trust. So, are there some things in your life that God is asking of you? It's not about you doing the good deed to earn it. It's about you trusting so is there something that God's asking and saying, I want to bring something in your life, but this is what I'm asking of you. Oh my God, I don't want to do it. What's going on there? Pride. You're saying I'm in control, not God. Are you willing to give it over? If you're willing to give it over, guess what? You're in a place where you can receive. And that's exactly what Abraham did. He received. And now when we walk in that same way, guess what? we are able to receive. Verse 8, What's more, the Scriptures looked forward to this time when God would make the Gentiles right in His sight because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when He said, All nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of faith. But those who depend on the law to make them right with God, listen to this, are under a curse. So in your mind, if you've got these standards and you're like, okay, if I hit this, me and God are good. You're under a curse. Oh, but no, I'm not following the law of Moses. I don't care. Whatever your law is, okay, whatever. Now, do we follow the, the commands of Jesus? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, but here's what you need to know in that. As you follow the commands of the Lord, you're going to fail. And you got to choose what to do. Do, do. As you follow those commands, are you going to you know, reach the point where you change them? Or are you going to continue to repent? As long as we walk in this place of repentance and we say, Okay, God, I've failed once again. I don't know what's going on, but I need you. As long as we're in that place... We are moving forward with the Lord. It's when we get in that place and we say, I'm done, God. I'm done. Or, or, or we say, God, nope, I, I'm changing things. But when we keep pursuing the Lord, He's working in our life. Verse 11, so it's clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the Scriptures say it's through faith that a righteous person has life. It's through faith. What is faith? Faith is believing. Faith is receiving. Faith is trusting. This way of faith is very different from the way of the law, which says it's through obeying the law that a person has life. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When He was hung on the cross, He took upon Himself the curse of our wrongdoing. It is written in the Scriptures, Cursed is everyone who hung on a tree. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing. He promised to Abraham so that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. Alright, I want to jump down to verse 23 now to finish out. Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under the guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all have been united with Christ and baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female. 
for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. So we are the heirs. We are the ones who receive. Now what was the purpose of the law? Okay, God gives commands. We want to seek to follow those. We don't throw those aside. That's not trusting the Lord. But when we set these standards and we say, okay, if I fail, I'm not worthy to receive anymore. Listen, you were never worthy to receive. Never. God is a able to cover it. He's just looking for humble hearts who are willing to repent. So what do you need to receive? Where are you needing some freedom? I, I want to ask you to open up your heart. I want to ask you to open up your heart and let the Lord show you if there's a place of pride where you're saying, no, 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 I got to do this first before I can receive. And I want to invite you to receive first and then you walk out the things that God has for you. But you got to get to that place of humility where you're willing to receive and you're not telling God, again, thinking that it's something holy, thinking that it's something good, that God, I'm going to meet this standard and then I'm going to receive. You will never meet that standard because it's only through God that you're able to do that very thing. Lord.